Hi there, welcome back. In Chapter 7 video series, we'll discuss interest rates and bond valuation. Remember, in Chapter 6 Part 4 video, I showed you how I made up the example of Apple borrowing money. We visited FINRA to find information on this Apple issued bond. I will put the link down below in description again. You can use this website to get market information. I would like to continue with Apple in this chapter. Remember, I picked Apple since we are in New York and New York is known as Big Apple, not to advertise the company. If you go down, you will see that this bond was issued in 2016. Soon, we will start discussing bond valuation and I will give bond pricing formula. But before jumping into the bond valuation terms and numbers, I would like to bring your attention to why Apple issued a bond. This is from the first page of the prospectus. The one did not appear in the video of Chapter 6, Part 4 during the screen recording. The one we've seen the details in the list this year and all are from 2016. Then. In 2019, Apple was borrowing 7 billion. Here's the prospectus. You can find many articles 2019 about why Apple is borrowing as a cash rich company. I will put the link for the prospectus and couple articles in description down below if you're interested. Generally speaking, firms need financial capital in terms of money to buy equipment to start research or to build new plant to make the story short to produce and provide goods and services. Now the question is how can firms raise the financial capital they need? For example, if Apple was a startup, banks would not be willing to loan money to Apple and Apple might go to early stage investors such as venture capital firms to raise money. But Apple is a California corporation established in 1977 and has a record of significant revenues or profit. They can reinvest profit or they can sell stock. Apple can make a credible promise to pay interest so they are very much eligible for bank loan or they can borrow money by issuing bond. Let's see the Standard & Poor's rating for this bond. It's double A plus. Double A means this debt has a very strong capacity to pay interest and repay principal. And with the plus sign, we understand that it's the strongest double A. This bond is in high grade bond class. Please visit SMP's webpage to see and understand their rating scales in detail. See the link in description down below. You will also find a link for Moody's rating there. Bond is a financial contract. By the way, the written agreement between the corporation and the lender is called a bond indenture. Borrower, which is Apple here, agrees to repay the principal of $1,000 at the end of the term. The amount will be paid at the end of the term is called face value or par value. And the par is usually $1,000 for corporate bonds. Apple also agrees to make interest payments every period. This dated interest payment made on the bond is called coupon. We don't see the coupon in bond detail, but we see coupon rate here. This rate is an annual rate. Remember by law, interest rate has to be disclosed as an annual rate. Coupon rate is the ratio of annual coupon and par value. Or you can write annual coupon equals coupon rate times par. In this example, coupon rate is 2.45%, par is 1000. Therefore, annual coupon is $24.50. Payment frequency is semi-annual. Then, semi-annual coupon payment will be half of the annual coupon, $12.25. If you wish to find the period coupon payment, instead of having coupon rate, you can have period coupon rate. For this example, since payment frequency is semi-annual, we have semi-annual payment. In other words, coupon is paid twice a year. To find the period rate, we divide this annual rate by 2. 2.45% will be divided by 2, then multiply by the par. Remember chapter 6 video where I discuss APR and period rate. This is exactly what I'm doing here. If we complete the work, we'll get 12.5%. Maturity date is specified. It is the date the principal amount of $1,000 will be paid. This is the price chart. We see that price of bond is fluctuating over time. You see the years on x-axis. Prices are actually quoted prices are on the y-axis. Why is the price fluctuating? Well, market interest rate is changing over time and time to maturity is also changing over time. Let's have the future cash flows for this bond on a timeline and have a better understanding of the price. We have semi-annual payments of $12.25.
maturity date is 2026. I'm going to use the year only while obtaining the bond pricing formula and to give the first example. But in later video of chapter 7, I'm going to use the full date. Here's a timeline from today, 2026. I can use the year for today, 2020. Since we have semi-annual payments, I will have 6 times to 12 periods. 0, 1, 2, the interest payments are $12.25. I have $12.25 interest payment and the principal will be repaid at the maturity. Therefore, in 12 period year, we also have the principal to be paid $1,000. The value of the bond is the present value of all these future cash flows. Therefore, to determine the bond's value or price today, we will find the present value. Let me call the semi-annual payments C. Let me call this T number of period. Then I have T, T equal cash flow. C, T. And we have, this is the par value. Therefore, to determine the bonds value, we need the number of period until the maturity. We need coupon and we need par value or face value. Since we need to discount each of these future cash flows back to year zero, we also need the market interest rate. The rate of return required in the market for the bond is called yield or yield to maturity. You can use yield to maturity, yield, required rate, market rate interchangeably. Here is the bond pricing formula. We have an annuity of payment C. To find the present value, I'll find the present value of these coupons. I also need to find the present value of this par value. So I'll discount this back to year zero. Isn't it equal payments of C forms an annuity? I'm going to find the present value of annuity. Now I can write the formula more explicitly. Then present value equals, we multiply payment C by, then we have present value of the par value. It's a single present value formula. So you'll divide par value by one plus yield to maturity. The sum is raised to the number of period. We have bond pricing formula. The coupon rate and par value are predetermined, but the bond price will change as yield to maturity changes and as the bond approaches maturity, in other words, as the number of period changes. Let's assume a market value and find the bond's current price. Assume that market rate is 3%, yield to maturity is 3%. To find the price of the bond, we will use the bond pricing formula, which is simply finding the present value of all future cash flow. C is the period coupon payment or semi-annual coupon payment. We've already calculated as $12.25. In the bracket, we have 1 minus 1 over 1 plus. The R here is the period rate as always, but the yield to maturity is an annual rate. We need to convert it to a period rate. Since we have semi-annual payments, to convert to period rate, we need to divide 0.03 by 2. Then 1 plus r will be raised to the number of periods, which is 12, divided by the period rate, 0.03 divided by 2. Then par value is 1000, divided by 1 plus r to t, 1 plus 0.03 half to the power 12. Then we'll get $970. Before interpreting this price, let's find the price by using a calculator. Clear time value of money, second, clear TBM. IY is three half, so I'll have three divided by two equals then IY. Period is, we have six years times same annual payments, so two equals 12, which is N, 1000, is the future value. 1000 is the money you're going to get. So it's an inflow. Therefore, I have positive 1000. Interest payment you'll receive is $12.25. So 12.25 is also an inflow and PMT. Compute present value. If we go back to bond details, you also see the last trade price. It's in hundreds, not in thousands. The price you see here is the 
coded price when we write the price as percent of the par. The coded price of $970 will be $97. We can find it by using a formula if you wish. So divide $970 by 1000 and multiply by 100. Coded price is 97 I have a question. The par value is $1,000, but this bond sells less than the par. Why this bond sells less than the par value? Well, the market weight is 3%, which is greater than the coupon rate. When market weight is higher than the coupon rate, in other words, when market pays more than this bond, you will be willing to pay less than $1,000 if you're investing in this bond. In the price chart, the price of the bond seems above the coded price of 105 or $1,050. Par value is $1,000, but lenders are willing to pay $10,050. Lenders are willing to pay a premium. When that's the case, you can immediately guess that current market rate is less than the coupon rate, and lenders expect this trend to continue.